The mark scheme originally was never even intended to go in the students' hands. So do not check the answers after each part that you do. Do the full paper. Do your best. Remember, you are not the machine. The calculator is the machine. Hello everyone, this is Mohammad Talha, your instructional designer for A-level physics. And what we'll be going over today is how do you approach AS physics as a course? How would you start this preparation for this uh, for your upcoming exams even? How do you approach the syllabus? How do you maintain a balance with, between the lectures and the practice? And how do you get that grade of your dreams? So this is all that we are going to talk about in this video right now. So first of all, if we just talk about the syllabus content as a whole, and this uh, is not even just uh, talking about physics. This is even for all of the courses in general, which is that for A-level physics, there is no such thing as a guest paper. You can, you can never actually predict what questions the examiner is going to give. And in that case, it's, it's useless to talk about what questions may appear, what questions may not appear. For example, some people like to engage in this debate a lot that this question is going to be asked or this chapter is important or this one is not as important. And all of that is not true. Because in A-level physics or in all of A-levels, what happens is that any question has an almost equal probability of being asked. So in that case, it's not really uh, viable to talk about what sections or what chapters may appear or not appear. And in that case, all of the theory content must be covered. So there is no getting around this. So you should do all of the theory, all of the lecture, all of the notes. Do not even leave one bit to chance. Now next, before going on to the prep and how do you uh, maintain a balance with the practice questions, let me just write down here the syllabus topics and I'll write them down in a certain order and then I'll explain that order later on. So in your syllabus as well, the first one is going to be physical quantities and measurement. The second one is going to be kinematics. So all of speed, distance, time, acceleration, all of those graphs is what is tested here. The third one is what is called dynamics. So all of Newton's laws, momentum and all, and all of that stuff is what is going to be tested here. Now I'm moving to one side here. So the fourth one is what I'm going to call forces, density and pressure. So all of turning effects, density, pressure, uh, hydro, hydrostatic pressure, upthrust, all of that is covered in this topic. Fifth one is work energy power. And the sixth one is deformation of solids which basically deals with young modulus and springs and all of that conversation. So now all of this mechanic stuff is now done. Now we'll go on to basically the other half of the syllabus. The seventh one is what is called waves. So first we talk about like the easier part of waves. So this is like basic waves. And then the next chapter, which is called superposition, talks about the more advanced types of waves. So basically diffraction, diffraction grating, stationary waves, all of that is talked about here. Similarly for electricity, you have a basic part. So the current electricity part. And then you have the more advanced part, which is DC circuits. All right. And then the last one of all of this is particle physics which honestly is not a very difficult chapter. It's one of the easiest ones in my and in a lot of other students' opinions as well. What you should do is do one topic at a time. So let's say you are doing a chapter. And for that chapter, let's say you are through with the theory. So, so theory is done. You looked at all the lectures, all the videos that you need to look at, and you are solid on the theory as far as you uh, are concerned. So even if you feel like you are not through with this, again, there's no getting around this. You must first make sure that you are very, very solid on this. After this, what you must do is that you must sit down with a friend and try to pick out unique past paper questions from some recent years. And now what I mean by unique is that these questions must be different in what 
they ask and how they ask a certain type of question if we speak very very specifically then every question in AS physics is going to be unique except for MCQs which are repeated and uh, those are exactly repeated so they are obviously not unique but in paper 2 questions uh, I don't think we've ever had a case where a paper 2 question is repeated so that is going to be entirely unique but when you'll be doing questions, you will be developing a sense where you will be saying that, oh, this question looks somewhat like what I've done before. Maybe it's the same usage of the formula or uh, the same variable is basically uh, asked from you. And you try to not do those similar questions. What you need to do with unique past paper questions is you need to spread all of this out. So you might want to do questions which has derivations as well. You might want to do questions which has numericals. You might want to do questions which are assessing your knowledge on graphs. So as different questions as you can get, you want to do a lot of those. And roughly I would say like if you're talking about MCQs, then I would say approximately try to pick out 30 MCQs. And again, it might be difficult for you to see which ones uh, you should attempt. But again, if you feel like just looking at an MCQ, you cannot do it, then you should definitely check that out. So 30 MCQs and I would say like eight structured questions, right? So this is for P1 and this is for P2. Let me also debunk another popular myth here, which is that you should only practice from P1 or only practice from P2. That's also not true because when you give the components, uh, when you give, uh, when you sit for the papers, you're obviously going to be sitting for both components. So you should do both of them. Use this analogy that if you have a question which appears in P1, that uh, coupled with maybe some extra information that could be required, a question like that could also appear in P2s, right? So do both of these. So for yearly practice, what you should do is you should set apart a few of the most recent papers that have taken place to do immediately before the exam. So right now, for example, uh, at the time that we are uh, speaking right now, at the time that you are watching this video, at the time when this video was made, the November 23 is the most recent session that has been released yet. So for November 23, October, November 23, you will have, uh, basically you will have a few variants so for each of the exam sessions in AS, you have three variants. So you will have three variants for P1 and then three variants for P2. So you set these apart. These you will do immediately before the exam. Then what you do that except from these, then the uh, next most recent session is May, June 23. And from May, June 23, you work backwards. Right? Then you do as many past paper questions you can in a yearly format backwards from May, June 23. So from May, June 23, then you'll do Feb, March 23, then you'll do October, November 22 and so on. For each year, you'll have 14 papers per year. And this is a lot of practice material to be very honest. So if I were you, I would actually be very happy with two or a maximum of three years of yearly practice. But again, think about this, the amount of work we actually put in to get to this yearly practice section. Right, first we did the topicals and then we uh, tested ourselves on chunks as well. And now we are back to the yearly practice questions. Now, when you'll be doing the yearly practice questions, you need to keep a few things in mind. First of all is this, that the mark scheme is not the gospel. What a lot of students do is whenever they are doing certain questions, they go to the mark scheme and see, all right, so this was a three mark question. First step was this, second one was this, third one was this, and then they try to emulate that exactly in the working they do. The mark scheme originally was never even intended to go in the student's hands. It was for the teachers to understand it and to explain to the students exactly how the marking works. 
So if you want to do a bit more uh, working than what is shown in the mark scheme and you should actually do this, be welcome to do that. All right, so the mark scheme is not something you must just cling to and do everything and anything that it says. You must do all the working that feels appropriate to you that you feel is essential to gaining a full score on a question. With the mark scheme, you must also talk about the examiner report here. And let's say that you are looking through the mark scheme and this happens a lot, which is that you are looking through uh, the mark scheme of a certain question and maybe that question is unreasonably difficult and you can't really understand what the mark scheme is trying to do or how it's trying to solve the question. In that case, what you do is that you use the examiner report and you read it try to try to understand exactly what it was that the examiner wanted the students to do and why they were not able to do it or, were, or what were the traps they fell into. So this is what the examiner report is about and you should read these regularly. So usually the examiner reports are published for a certain session. So let's say you are done with all these sessions of, I don't know, May, June 22. So you're done with the P1s and you're done with the P2s as well. Then you should go through the examiner report and read through these. Another very important thing that I almost forgot about is this, that do not check the mark scheme after each part. So let's say you are doing a yearly pass paper and needless to say, you must time yourself to actually gain a practice of how you are going to approach all of these uh, papers. So do not check the answers after each part that you do. Do the full paper, do your best. And then once you're done with all of that, then you check through the mark scheme. Because if you're going to do that or each time you get stuck, and you don't think about how to attend a part, uh, how to attempt a part, what you'll do is that you'll just go to the mark scheme and you'll say, oh yes, I knew exactly how to do this. I just couldn't think of it at the moment. And then you won't be able to think of it in the exam either. So you should not check the mark scheme after each part. Now, let's say you are doing the yearly practice and obviously you will make mistakes. That's the path to learning. But sometimes what students might find is let's say a student is always getting stuck in the kinematics question of a yearly pass paper. Now, if it happens once or twice, that's okay. But if you feel like in four or five different papers that you've done, either P1 or P2, you're always getting stuck with the same topic, that means that your prep for that certain topic is lacking. Then what you need to do is you need to go through the theory part again. So you need to go through the theory part, attempt topicals for that chapter and then you come back again to the yearly quests. All right. So this is how you will approach your AS physics course. Some general uh, tricks here and some general advice about how to tackle the paper. The first one is do not jump at the calculator at the first sign of some values in the question. Remember, you are not the machine. The calculator is the machine. So first you need to write everything that you know out. You need to set up the equation. You need to have this also shown that what values you exactly substituted for the variables and then you need to show that working in your calculator. Also make sure that significant figures are taken care of. So in uncertainties, you learn this idea that the significant figures that you give your answer to should be equal to the least number of SF in the question that is given or one more than that. So that is also something you need to take care of. Units are not really a problem in AS physics because those are always provided. And even in MCQs, do look out for the words that are starred, uh, that are bold, basically. So often the words in bold are meant to draw your attention to a specific uh, thing that the examiner wants. So make sure you pay a lot of attention to the bold words. 
Sometimes if you don't, then your reasoning and your answer entirely flips on its head and obviously it would be wrong. All right. So this is a bit about how you can tackle your AS physics exam. So best of luck for your exams. Hope all of you do really well. If you still need a bit more support or a bit more help, you can reach out to us so that we can solve your queries. Goodbye.